hey we all have limitations and you know what your limitations are so don't forget don't be afraid to ask for some help if you need it talk about now is uh, batteries and I've had several people ask me personally and through YouTube email that kind of thing if I really really honestly think that solar power and living off the grid is worth it and in all honesty I can't say that it's worth it for everyone and in every case because um, uh, if you're if you're in the middle of town and you have electricity, it's probably going to be cheaper to just tie to the grid. However, in that case, you don't have the uh, control over your electrical costs. That if they want to raise the rates, you're stuck. Um, where I live in Colorado, they wanted eleven thousand dollars to bring power to my house. And power's not that far from my house, but I had to pay my fair share of what the other guy paid to get the line to his house. I got to pay half of what his costs were up to my point. And eleven thousand dollars, well, I could, I was able to put in a whole solar system, so it was a no-brainer for me. But what really drives the cost of alternative energy kind of through the roof? is batteries. Batteries have just gotten so expensive over the last few years, it, it just, it's unbelievable. Uh, the price of solar panels have gone down, charge controllers, inverters, all that's gotten cheap comparatively speaking. But batteries have really gotten expensive. And um, so I think that with Tesla and their battery wall, there's some promise there. Lithium-ion technology is not a new technology. They've just got, gotten it more refined over time where that it's, it's a real viable technology. Um, but I think until somebody really finds a real push uh, with a whole new technology of batteries, I, I, I would like to see something like more like a capacitor, a huge capacitor that could just have almost no impedance in it whatsoever so that you could really shove a lot of power into it and take a lot of power out of it all at once without damage so I think battery technology has got a long way to go but it's one of those kinds of things that there's a lot of money being made off of batteries right now and the industry doesn't have any reason to really change so there's sort of just floating around in there and making minor improvements to existing technology. So, uh, if it weren't for the cost of batteries, I would be all, I would, I would be really a huge proponent of everyone going off grid. But batteries are really the thing that, that kind of holds everybody back. Um, having said that, there are ways to make your batteries last longer and a lot of people will try to buy batteries to accommodate their needs around the clock so they can basically live like they're on the grid and if you've got that mentality it's probably going to be a huge failure at some point my batteries are used very very little they're used at night and only for lights a couple of computers or a tv and um, the well pump will kick on if we run the water, that sucks a lot of power, 
uh, also the um, uh, microwave we might use that a couple of times a night so if we really wanted to we would just make sure all the bathing and washing was done before the sun went down and we ate before the sun went down and my batteries could probably last forever but they're they're kind of like a rubber band you stretch them and they come back but over time eventually it just breaks and batteries are like that so the more you can stay out of your batteries the longer they'll last but on the other hand if you don't use them at all they'll actually just kind of disintegrate because they're not being used so you do have to use them some uh, but the more you stay out of them the more the, or the longer they'll last I knew a fellow in his 80s uh, back in the 70s and uh, he was born in the late 1800s and he had bought a wind generator, one of the old Jacobs wind generators, and he had his original set of batteries. And the only thing that he used his system for was running a refrigerator that was electric. And it wasn't a servo, it was something that had a motor and pulleys on it, uh, fan belts, and something that somebody he knew kind of basically built for him. And, uh, and lights in his house and that's really all he ran. His water was supplied by a windmill and uh, those batteries were probably uh, 50 years old, 40 years old at least when I met him and they were just the standard you know deep cycle batteries, uh, wet cells like you'd find in a telephone office today. So. I know that, that there's a way to really make it last a lot longer. It just depends on how you want to change your lifestyle. But uh, batteries, man, that's the heart of your system. And if you lose your batteries, you don't have electricity. Your, your charge controller cannot uh, keep the voltage. It can't operate that fast to keep the voltage within parameters so that your inverter can operate. Uh, under certain conditions it can be done and with a grid tie it can be done but if you're off the grid your batteries are the heart of your system you gotta really really take care of those batteries so anyway another two cents from Steve okay now I want to talk about uh, prepping and I know that's something I generally don't touch on because Prepping is something that is as unique as every individual out there. However, I've gotten a lot of great ideas from people out there. And there's two uh, folks out there that have YouTube channels that I'd really like to give some kudos to, some props. And, one, and, and they've kind of got the same name. One is a woman who is named The Peaceful Prepper and she talks about prepping in an urban setting and then the other one is Peaceful Prepper and that's Jim, he's a good buddy of mine really have a lot of respect for him and if you're into prepping at all I recommend both of those channels highly um, and one of the things that Jim said a while back in one of his videos is that uh, you know if anything does happen, any kind of disaster, whether it's man-made or natural or whatever, you know, a lot of it's going to have to do with where you are when disaster strikes. And you can be prepared for anything, and if you've got tons and tons of food, but your house floods and everything's ruined, it was kind of all for naught. So a lot of it's just going to really depend on where you're at. Um, and I agree with that a lot and another thing that the peaceful prepper I don't remember her name but um, uh, you know she talks about how you can prep right in town regardless of how big your city is or whatever has a lot of really cool ideas and you know really I kind of think that's where it's at um, if any disaster strikes there's a lot of people that think they're gonna go off to this remote area and you may not be able to get to that remote area. So if you're not prepared right where you're at, then I think that uh, that's a, a false reality that you might have created for yourself. So prepping is good. I keep enough food in the house to last at least a couple of months. 
because uh, living in Colorado you can get a big snow and you just don't know when you're going to get out so being prepared is a good thing I see a lot of wisdom behind that there's some people that have turned it into a cult and I don't know that that's necessarily wise but you definitely need to prepare for things that are on the obvious end of things and I really think that being prepared right where you're at uh, is the best course of action. Even in Colorado, I'm pretty isolated where I live, and I could go on forever right where I'm at. Um, but, you know, they just say that something couldn't happen right there where I live, and uh, we do have a couple of bug out places that are away from the house, and we've got supplies at those locations right now, but that's also assuming that we can get to those locations. If we can't get to them, then we're still stuck. So you have to decide what's appropriate for yourself. I really like all the idea sharing that's going on out there. Man, it's awesome. I, I really I like being a part of it. It's, it's as exciting as it is scary. And Jim, man, I appreciate your videos. I want to give you kudos. Please subscribe to him. Um, He's, if, if you're into prepping at all, he's got great ideas, and so does The Peaceful Prepper for Urban Prep. You guys check him out. I think you'll really enjoy him. Y'all have a good week. Thank you. That's it for this week's video. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you next week, or next month, or whenever I get to it. I always answer questions whether posted publicly or privately. See you then.